good to have you on this channel and today we'll be discussing VRFs otherwise known as virtual routing and forwarding uh, it is layer 3 uh, virtual routing or segmentation uh, uh, just as we have VLANs which is layer 2 virtual local area networks now VLANs have been around for uh, quite a long time and they work really well they are actually very good um, but you see they they are quite old and they have the limitations they work well on the layer 2 but the moment uh, VLANs are leaving the layer 2 uh, segment and going into the layer 3 its ability to segment no longer is possible because uh, the router doesn't deal with anything layer 2 it doesn't understand VLANs, it just understands IP addresses and so the router can do nothing great with VLANs and so uh, clever guys decided okay what are we going to do to ensure that we have layer 3 segmentation what do we need layer 3 segmentation you may ask uh, this team here is a experimental team in this company and this production these guys do a lot of heavy tests uh, they run hacking tools they install softwares and they're pretty careless as well uh, they like to play games but you see the problem is because they're experimental we don't want them and their traffic to be able to see or speak to the production submit but if traffic was just staying here there would be no problem because we do have a logical separation of these uh, uh, departments based on function so for the production function there's a subnet they are part of VLAN 30 experimental function this is their subnet they are part of VLAN 20 but this switch is connected to a layer 3 router or a layer 3 collapse core switch which has IP routing enabled now when I come here to uh, experimental and I do ping 10.10.30.30 if we do not have uh, if we do not have and let's prove that let's ping that now wait around and see see it's responding now if we do not have the router what will happen so let's just keep this running uh, let, us, let it keep going now this guy is using this interface F3 0 to come back so I'm, I'm gonna go to router 1 over here let's console that so I'm gonna come down here conf t conf t interface uh, f3 is like 0 shot before I do the final shot let's put experimental here do shot let's see what happens it has no way of pinging this here because there's no layer 3 device to reach the traffic around this roundabout and bring it back into here this subnet or this network so introducing a layer 3 device makes it quite challenging to control traffic flow because this layer 3 device sees them all as connected networks or uh, connected routes or uh, yes connected routes or you know like that it makes it difficult um, for it to separate the two unless you want to d decide to put an access list here an access list there and control what who can come to this subnet and that subnet and it becomes a bit a bit too much and so what do we do to fix that 
but first let's see uh, the gravity of this problem so now experimental they've been given this bandwidth and the bandwidth they've been given is 192.168.20.254 now when I go back into the router and enable that interface again no shot come back and ping again let's wait a second here we go it's pinging back okay so you know how to get there but we've dedicated 191 to say 20 the 254 as their path to the internet so when i ping 192 the 168 the 20 the 254 so they can get to the air path which is good what if we check the other path are they able to get to it they're able to get to it as well so that is not good and so you know um it's not great for the network uh we, we clearly don't have a good partition between us so what i've done is i've put this line in here and i want to i want us to separate this network here completely isolated from this network below here okay so um let's do this so you and I can get a picture of it. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to separate this network here. And separate this network here. So we don't want this network here to mix with that network here. So what we've done is this called production, that's production, that's experimental, that's experimental. When the traffic going this way, when the traffic leaving this guy going across to go this way, and never ever come this way, and we want traffic going this way to come that way. And so what we do is we implement a good friend of ours called Mr. VRF. Mr. VRF. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So stay on and let's have a look at how we configure VRF uh, to separate the functions. Uh, but a few key points to make uh, you aware is this layer 3 router and I like to call it layer 3 because a lot of you will be using collapse core really uh, in, in your industry when I do show IP route it has one routing table and the routing table contains all that information here all these different subnets uh, or let's say uh, the connections connected uh, routes uh, it knows all about this there's no separation here so when I make a request anywhere it will come down here come through here and then it will do it but what you want to do you want to separate that so that's where VRF comes in so let me wipe this board uh, we're gonna change a few things and let's configure VRF so hold on right, right second and let's do this so uh, we're already aware of what we want to achieve here uh, we've got the experimental team who may be running viruses doing tests and hacking and what have you uh, they they may be part of the cyber security or or the team who do brute force and pen tests and what have you and but they need to be on site with us so what we've done as good network engineers is to separate the traffic uh, in layer 2 using VLAN segmentation which works well but because they need to get to the internet and we need to get to the internet we're hitting a router and it's quite a challenge because you, you may need to keep adding access list and blocking and you know then that can become quite an overkill sometimes and cumbersome and they don't always work well 
So what you're trying to do is to separate the traffic force from rental uh, from production. And this rental is, is given this dedicated bandwidth to the internet, ISP1. Production is given this dedicated bandwidth to ISP2 internet. So with VRF routing and forwarding VRF light, we are able to perform layer three segmentation or partitioning, uh, almost like layer three VLANing or VNet or, or tunneling, you know, whatever you want to call it, the VPN, whatever you. Um, but the idea is to make sure that we can route this traffic without interfering with this guy here. And to do that, uh, we need to do a number of things. So I'm going to go over onto router number one and define our VRFs. So let's have a look at what we have so far. I'm going to show uh, IP route. I have this uh, routing table. Show IP interface brief. I want to make a note of all the interfaces. Let me just include the ones I've configured up. And those are the interfaces I should be concerned about. So interface fast zero slash zero, zero slash one, two slash zero, and three slash zero. Of course, the loopback is there uh, because we're doing OSPF. Um, but let's go ahead and show run let's start checking OSPF and let's see what's there so these are and as you can see it's one OSPF routing process and all these networks are here and therefore OSPF uh, with this link state database knows about all these subnets and so you make a request from experimental uh, production OSPF says I know where to take you and it goes there but with VRF, you can logically separate the traffic from the experimental from the production. And uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, keep an eye on these uh, details here. So let's go and conf t. First, we're going to do is we're going to create. Uh, VRF routes or routes. So I will say IP VRF experimental IP VRF production. Thank you. Production. But then, which interfaces am I applying uh, experimental and which one am I applying production? So let's exit out of here. Interface F30. Interface F30 has an IP address of 10.10.20.254. I'm going to put that in the experimental. VRF forwarding table. Uh, so this is how I'm going to do it. So when you get to the interface, you type IP VRF forwarding and experimental. See what it says. It says there's an IP address here. I've removed it so that I can enable VRF. So now I'm going to say thank you for doing that. Now, can you please apply the IP address again? IP address 10.10.20.254.255.255.255.255.255.254. Still no shot. And then I will go to the second interface, interface F20. Interface F20. Description.
and I'll also I'll say IPVRF and the keyword is forwarding and the name for that is production it says you got an IP address there I took it off thank you thanks for letting me know 10.10.30.254 255.255.255.0 and enter no shut that interface still and then control Z copy run start now when I do show IP route what do I see there I can only see 192.168.30 the 30 and 20 I don't see the 10 networks anymore you know so what do we do <laughs> it's moved somewhere when I do show IP route and I do VRF and let's select one experimental you see it's created a new routine table a little routine table here dedicated for experimental and I can check for production There it is. So now we're going to have to add this interface F0 slash 0 into the experimental VRF and then uh, interface F01 into production. So let's go ahead and do the same. So conf t interface F0 slash 0 description do show interface F0 slash 0. Okay, I've got a good description there anyway, so that's good enough. So whilst I'm here, I'm going to do the exact same thing. So um, the command again is IP VRF for boarding, and then it's experimental. It complains about the IP address. So thank you, IP address. It's 192.168.20.254.255.255.255.255.0. I'll say no shut. Interface F0 slash 1, that's production. Uh, IP VRF forwarding and resend production. So that's that's this path here. Production. Thank you. Has an IP address. I should put it back on. 192.168.30. And it's a 254.255.255.255.0. Uh, I'll say no shut. I want to do that. Look at the IP routing table. Show IP routes. Routing table only has the loopback interface. It's like it's virtually empty. But let's just look at show IP route VRF production. And that has the route I need. Production has 10.10.30 30 network and 192.168.30 network. Let's look at this for mental. Experimental, and that's that as well. One and two wants to say 20, 10 to 10 to 20. So it's really good. Okay, now remember we had OSPF. When I do show run section OSPF, we have an OSPF there. We want to get rid of it. So, property, no router. OSPF1. So when I do show config again, it's gone. So over here, we're going to take our time and now we're going to do our OSPF. But before we do that, why don't we have a quick verification? Show IP VRF. And that tells you that we have interfaces F30, F00, F20 f01 in the relevant vrf 
tables for them playing. So over here we're going to go ahead and um, do our OSPF. The OSPF one is pretty straightforward actually. Um, the config is straightforward. Instead of having not one router process, we're going to divide them to two. So why don't we use router process one for experimental and two for production. And the router process doesn't matter. Uh, it's just a logical way of identifying uh, the OSPF uh, routing uh, protocol. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go to conf t again, and I'll do uh, create OSPF uh, process for each VRF network. So I'm going to do router OSPF one, it's VRF, and it's experimental. Wonderful. The network I'm concerned about is a 10.10.20.254.0 all zero area zero. And then the next one .20 area 0 and then the interface that's facing the client which is F30 I'm going to make that a uh, positive interface so positive interface fat not 3 slash 0 and once that's done I'll do the exact same for the other side. So conf t router OSPF to VRF production. Let's see if we can go back in there. There's a testing network, 10.10.30 network over here. And then does one ninety one say dot thirty? That's over here. Over here. One ninety one say thirty two five four. And then uh, passive interface will be interface fast internet two slash zero. Wonderful. And Copy one stop show IP route VRF experimental. Let's verify a few things. So it knows about this and then let's check production. What's happening to OSPF? The passive interface. Is it the one causing trouble? Let's have a quick look. Show IP OSPF interface. Brief. So all these are participating in OSPF. Show IP route. OSPF. Let's see if that works. <laughs> Production. So we got OSPF on the first one for rental. OSPF production. The loop back. Let's have a look.
figuring out OSP for the uh, VRF instances, VRF1 and VRF2 uh, being experimental and production respectively, why don't you first verify what you have? So show IP route. First, I don't want to see anything in there, but I can go here and show IP route VRF uh, experimental. Oh, sorry guys, I'm, on <laughs> oh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Okay, so router really, I'm on that uh, VPC, uh, show IP route. And I only see that uh, loopback interface. But when I come over here and I do show IP route, route on the VRF called experimental. So the experimental has these two. So when I go to experimental, experimental should be only two only able to ping uh, the 192.168.20 network and then 10 to 10 to 20 so I do ping 10 to 10 to 20 to 254 uh, get response okay when I do 192.168 I can ping that okay but do you remember in the past I could also ping uh, the other internet network for uh, production? Can I ping it again now? Let's check. And it says unreachable, destination unreachable, destination unreachable. Can I ping this guy here? Someone, someone in the production network? 10.10.30.30. Unreachable, unreachable, unreachable. And the same thing goes for uh, production. Can I ping the experimental 10.10.20.20? Unreachable, 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 unreachable. So, as you can see, the VRF is working well. Uh, can I ping that gateway 192.168? Uh, and it's uh, 20.254 unreachable, 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 unreachable. What if I ping the networks I only know about? My own networks. Well, here we go. Pinging correctly. Pinging correctly. And then let's ping my gateway. Of course, without my gateway, I won't be able to get anywhere but 10.30.254. So you can see the VRF is pretty straightforward. It works and it's easy to set up. So show IP VRF. Let's see what VRF says. We got these interfaces and in the right VRFs, they are in the right OSPF. Show run section OSPF. So in VRF experimental, we have this. VRF reduction, we have this. So this is how you actually perform segments, segmentation or layer three partitioning on the router. So the virtual routing and forwarding uh, creates virtual routers in one box. So it virtualizes the router within this box. So this box will be like when you have a hypervisor with v VM service in it. So this box is behaving like many boxes doing many things. So this is how it works. You might as well still use VLANs to do your separation here. Uh, but when needed, you know, on the layer three side, make sure that if there's a network, a subnet, that you don't want a broadcast domain you don't want to talk to everything else you can implement implement uh, vr very nicely and that can save you a lot of headache we also also think of not using flat networks but yet you still need to roam maybe wireless roaming 
maybe we can use VRF uh, to ensure that uh, we have that network uh, going across the campus enterprise network and uh, uh, with the APs working well to broadcast. We'll look at that at some point, but I thank you for viewing. Um, prevent la layer three issues uh, as much as possible. Uh, just master uh, virtual routing and forwarding. Like I've said to you earlier, it's straightforward. It's easy to set up. And so um, if we want to do more, please just rewind this video, go back and learn some more. So thank you for viewing and I hope to see you on the next one.